Hello and welcome to the dentist hub. In today's video, we will learn about the setting reactions of amalgam alloys, the Eames technique and the mercury toxicity. Watch the video till end and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the dentist hub. Amalgam alloys are classified into the low copper and the high copper alloys based on their composition. The high copper alloys are further classified into admixed alloys or blended alloys and unicomposition alloys. If we take a look at the composition of these alloys, the low copper alloy consists of 70% of silver, 29% of tin. The high copper alloys where the admixed alloy consists of 65-70% to of silver, 30% of tin and around 30-40% to of copper. The unicomposition alloys consist of 60% of silver, 30% of tin and 30% of copper. Let us now understand the setting reaction in each of these alloys. The low copper alloys. The major components in the low copper alloy are silver which is 63 to 70% and tin which is 26 to 29%. So when the alloy powder and the mercury are triturated, the silver and tin in the outer portion of particle dissolves into the mercury. In the same way, mercury diffuses into the alloy particles and starts reacting to form crystals of silver mercury and silver tin compounds. Now there is some amount of the unreacted alloy powder which consists of the silver and tin compound and this is referred to as the gamma phase. The silver and mercury compound which is formed is referred to as the gamma 1 phase and the tin and mercury compound which is formed is referred to as the gamma 2 phase. The properties of hardened amalgam depends on the proportion of the reaction phases. If there is more gamma phase, the stronger is the amalgam. And gamma 2 phase is the weakest component and is less stable to corrosion. Now, coming to the admixed alloys, here one part of silver copper eutectic alloy is mixed with two parts of silver tin alloy. When the components are mixed, the mercury begins to dissolve the outer portion of particles. Here, silver from silver copper eutectic alloy and both silver and tin from silver tin alloy react with mercury. Tin dissolved in mercury reacts with copper in the eutectic alloy. See, in the low copper alloys, we saw that tin reacted with mercury and formed the gamma 2 phase which was unstable, right? But here, the tin particles react with copper and form the eta phase. Now these eta particles, they form a layer around the unreacted silver copper particles. So, there is this silver and mercury compound which is the gamma 1 phase that forms the matrix and the unwanted gamma 2 phase is eliminated and replaced by the eta particles. I hope it's clear till now. So let's move on to the unicomposition alloys. In these alloys, there is same composition throughout but the silver, tin and the copper particles are present in different phases. So each alloy particles contain the gamma phase the beta phase and the epsilon phase. Now when this alloy is triturated with mercury, the silver and tin dissolve forming the gamma 1 crystal matrix that binds together the partially dissolved alloy particles. At this stage very little copper dissolves but later a layer of eta crystals are formed at the surface of particles. Thus, the undesirable gamma 2 phase formation is eliminated. The advantage of these high copper alloys like the admixed and the unicomposition alloys is that there is faster set, low residual mercury and high early strength and low condensation pressure. 
So this is about the setting reactions of silver amalgam alloys. Make sure you give it another reading after watching this video so that you'll have a better and clear picture. Let us now learn about the Eames technique. It was proposed by Dr. Wilmer Eames and is targeted to reduce the excess mercury content by reducing the original mercury to alloy ratio. Here the mercury is to alloy ratio is 1 is to 1. With this technique, there is 50% or less amount of mercury in the final restoration with its obvious advantages. Now let us see what is mercury toxicity. Mercury vapors cause a greater risk to the dentist and dental assistants as they are easily inhaled and absorbed through the lungs. These vapors may arise during trituration condensation and finishing of amalgam restorations and also during removal of old restorations. Some precautions that are to be taken to reduce mercury toxicity are well-ventilated clinic, pre-proportioned capsule to control the mercury to amalgam ratio, store excessive amalgam in well-sealed containers, Spilt mercury has to be cleaned as soon as possible. Amalgam scrap should be disposed or recycled appropriately. Thank you for watching. Do like, share and subscribe to The Dentist Hub for more informative videos.